Hello, welcome to lecture 1 of module 3. This is lecture number 7 of this course. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about quantum measurement process and this uh, concept is extremely important in the context of quantum entanglement as you will uh, see later. And this measurement process in quantum mechanics is fundamentally different from the classical measurement process. Please note that the classical information theory is formulated independently of the measurement of the system. This is because of the reason that you are always going to get the same result if the system processes the same information, which is totally different in the in uh, uh, quantum information processing. So let us uh, discuss about measurements uh, now and uh, you will find this concept a little bit technical but I will try to give as much example as possible. So let us begin. Measurement is basically an experimental procedure mean to determine the value of a physical observable. That's what we mean by measurement. So it's an experimental procedure to determine the value of a physical observable and this procedure this procedure has to be sus in fact it has to be carefully designed so that it should be this procedure should be sus it should be sus that the observable the observable being measured being measured does not get altered and in quantum mechanics measurement has very important uh, role and it's a it's a very critical concept and by making a measurement on the system what we mean by in quantum mechanics is that we project the system state vector into one of the basis vector that the measurement equipment defines. Let us say we have this is pictorially speaking. Suppose this is my system and this system is in the state say k psi and by making a measurement what is done is that this state vector k psi is projected into one of the one of the eigenvalues let us say a i so and the corresponding eigenstate say eigenstate kate a i so because of the measurement this state vector kate psi is projected into one of the eigenstate a i and measurement of an observable suppose anyway all of us we already know that any physically observable quantity is always represented by an operator in quantum mechanics and measurement of an observable a of a system in the state psi yields an eigenvalue a of the operator and corresponding eigenstate is say kate, kate a suppose because of the measurement eigenvalue i get is eigenvalue we get is a and the corresponding eigen gate is gate a and the probability of getting the eigenvalue probability of getting the eigenvalue a is given by mod square of this quantity right this is what we know it is also one of the postulates of quantum mechanics so basically measurement causes the state of the system gate psi to collapse into an eigenstate gate a so if you say measure the observable a then you are going to obtain the eigenvalue a or in other words you the state is getting collapsed into the eigen gate a to describe this process uh, by an operator acting on the state generally we introduce the so-called projection operator so projection operator i think 
most of you may know just uh, let us have a quick recap what we mean by projection operator once again so the action it's basically action of the projection operator is to project the state along another uh, state suppose the projection operator let me define is say this one get a bra a so this is the projection operator and if suppose my state is uh, ket psi and i can write it as a superposition of eigen kets say this is the superposition principle then the projection operator say pj it if it is operated on the state vector ket psi what it is going to result is this projection operator pj is ket j uh, bra j and it operates on ket psi which is the superposition of the eigen kets uh, like this right and i can now write this quantity as follows uh, i can write it as say ket j and this i am having uh, ci is just a number and i have j i so this quantity is nothing but kronecker delta j i so because of this i am going to get simply cj ket j so as you see the projection operator pj projects the state vector along the direction of the ket j okay and there are many properties of projection operator some of the notable properties are very easy to prove for example if you can easily verify it pj square is equal to pj right that it's very easy to see another property is that projection operators are mutually orthogonal if you have two projection operator different projection operators say p i and p j and it's equal to delta i j p j that means if i is not equal to j then uh, p i p j product is going to give you zero and projection operators this is very important projection operators are complete uh, basically these are projectors so you have this is basically the so called completeness condition because this is equal to identity operator and in fact it is easy to see that this results is because pi is nothing but ket i bra i and as we know that this is nothing but the so called uh, completeness condition and also projection operators because uh, has to be hermitian and it is also easy to see pi dagger is equal to pi okay this is hermitian and note uh, this particular it's very easy to see also that the probability of getting the eigen value a uh, if the state is in the uh, the system is in the arbitrary state ket psi the probability of getting the eigen value a would be given by uh, mod square of this quantity and who is actually i can write also as this psi p a right psi okay so the projection operator p a projects ket psi into eigen state ket uh, a and uh, the probability is can be written in this in terms of projection operator this can be written very simply by this expression now let us understand the measurement process a bit more clearly to do that let us say a system is in an arbitrary state ket psi say uh, the system is in an arbitrary state ket psi okay and the observable is represented by operator we are interested in measuring an observable and this observable is represented by the operator a and this operator a satisfy the eigen value equation a 
cat a n is equal to a n cat a n and a n these are as you can see these are eigen cats and this is your eigen value okay and measurement of the observable a uh, on the system yields any of the eigen values right uh, okay let me make you understand it by this suppose we have a a number of copies of the system and the system is in the state kate psi suppose we have n number of copies like this kate psi kate psi like this n number of identical copies n copies we have okay n number of copies we have the same system exact system and we are making a measurement on the system and basically we are measuring the observable a and if we measure make a measurement then because of the measurement if i make an individual measurement on k psi then uh, i may get any one of the eigen values uh, eigen values let us say i get the eigen value say a5 if i make another measurement on this k psi suppose i get this time a100 all identical uh, copies i have i make measurement on each on each of them uh, at the same time then i am going to get sometime i will get a say 60 and suppose i make sometimes i may again get say a5 as i have got it here and like this okay suppose i here get again suppose a uh, 60 or say 61 and so on any of the eigenvalues okay uh, then if uh, suppose uh, some uh, eigenvalues because of this uh, numerous number of measurements some eigenvalues you are getting uh, again suppose some number of times let us say say you get suppose say we get say we get the eigenvalue lambda m uh, pm number of times pm number of times okay that's the frequency at which we get the eigenvalue pm uh, lambda m pm number of times we get now if say n is very large suppose n tends to infinity the number of copies uh, of the system is very large then the fraction of measurement then fraction uh, of measurements fraction of measurements so this is fraction of measurements that give that give lambda m is simply we get it pm number of times and n number of copies we have right so uh, this is what we are going to have and this basically is nothing but the probability of getting the eigenvalue lambda m i hope you are getting the idea in other words what i mean to say is that quantum mechanics tells us the rate at which we will obtain a particular outcome when we have an infinite number of copies of the same exact systems okay so basically quantum mechanics tells us quantum mechanics tells us that the rate this is important the rate at who is the rate at who is we, we will obtain we will obtain a particular a particular outcome when we have an infinite number number of copies of the same exact system this is important to understand because the essence of measurement is hidden here in this particular statement that i have written here let me make a little bit of more 
uh, elaboration here suppose if uh, we have just one copy right rather than n number of copies if we just have one copy we can only know the probability of getting a particular outcome so if we have say this eigenvalue equation say a n a n this means that if the system is in an arbitrary state k psi and which i can write it as a superposition of the eigenkates like this where cn is a complex coefficient and by now you know that cn i can write it as a n psi right so the probability of getting the eigenvalue a n is simply would be mod of a n psi whole square and this is nothing but c n mod square so now the process of measurement can be actually this described in a picture pictorially i can uh, describe it as follows suppose let me let us say uh, on let me draw the x axis for x axis and y axis on the x axis let me put the eigen values okay suppose i have this eigen values in the x axis and okay let us say eigen values are say a1 a2 a3 uh, a4 and so on uh, like this a5 and so on we are having all the eigen values on the x axis and in, along the y axis let me put the corresponding probabilities suppose p of a n that's the probability of getting a particular eigen value so and the system is in an arbitrary state k psi and these eigen values you know depends on the operator a only okay it depends on the operator a only and it does not depend on the state k psi now each eigen value has a, a particular height uh, given by the square of the absolute square of the coefficient suppose the probability of getting a1 is going to be given by c1 mod square and in this prob in this diagram it would have some height Cor corresponding to a1 the probability is mod c1 square corresponding to a2 the probability would be say c2 mod square corresponding to a3 let us say it is c3 mod square and so on corresponding to a4 it may be the height may be this much c4 mod square for a5 it may be like this right it would be c5 mod square it would be c5 mod square and so on that's how you will get so basically what you are uh, getting is the is an uh, distribution it's a probability distribution that you are uh, basically obtaining here and uh, higher the height higher is the probability of obtaining that particular eigen value so if we have a very large number of uh, copies of the exact system that means ideally say n tends to infinity if n tends to infinity a very large number of exact copies of the system we have the fraction of time we get any given outcome approaches this particular distribution okay the this particular probability distribution uh, means uh, the, the what i mean to say is that the fraction of times we get any given outcome any given outcome a process a process this distribution distribution i hope you get the idea here however for any individual measurement we cannot know beforehand what will be the outcome okay unlike classical physics in quantum mechanics we cannot predict the precise outcome of measurement of a physical quantity instead what quantum mechanics tells us is the precise probability distribution of all possible outcomes of that measurement now to be more formal we construct a measurement operator 
say m m such that the probability such that the probability of obtaining an outcome probability of obtaining an outcome say m in the state k psi is given by this expression p of m which is probability of obtaining the outcome m is given by the expectation value of m m dagger m m this is the expression and here m m as i said is the measurement operator and this measurement operator satisfy the completeness condition sum over all indices m small m m m dagger m m is equal to identity and the state uh, which we can get immediately after measurement is given by the state immediately after the measurement is this will be more clear to you if i give you an example i will give you uh, very soon now the state immediately after the measurement is k m is equal to m m k psi this is the measurement operator m m uh, and divided by square root of p of m okay or if i write the full expression then this would be m m k psi and here i have expectation value of this m m dagger m m i'm not going to write the operator sign again and again so i'm just writing here but later on i will avoid to put a uh, you know this sign here cap sign okay now let me give an ex uh, give an example so these are these two are very important result this is also in fact this is also these three are very important result in the context of measurement operators to give you an example let us say we have a superposition state like this k psi is it's a qubit state it's a superposition of k0 and k1 a and b are the complex coefficient and we measure uh, this particular state to see if it is in the state k psi k0 or k1 okay so the measurement operators here uh, we define them like this we, ha we have two measurement operators and these are the projection operators one is k0 bra 0 like this and another measurement operator is m1 that would be k1 bra 1 these are the two projection operators and getting the outcome zero that means getting the the system in the state uh, k0 so who is i write it as p of zero there's a the probability of getting uh, the state to be in the uh, in the k state zero is given by this expression now it will be m0 dagger m0 k psi and okay let us open it up so if you open it up first of all as you can see m0 dagger m0 is simply it is m0 dagger is m0 is k0 bra 0 right and m0 dagger is the opposite of that so that would be simply this one this is your m0 dagger and which is same as m0 and now we have simply k0 bra 0 and therefore here let me put k0 bra 0 psi and this guy is nothing but modulus of modulus square of 
this quantity and this is again nothing but mod of a square this is basically a known result to us i'm just uh, showing you the application of this measurement operator and as i said the state immediately after the measurement is now k0 so as per our definition we have m0 k psi divided by p of 0 square root of p of 0 which is uh, we have m0 is k0 bra 0 applied on k psi and divided by square root of mod a square right p p0 this we have already worked out and this implies that we are going to have it would be simply a0 right divided by mod mod a okay so this is actually nothing but this is nothing but the state k0 similarly for the other case m1 we can have it now here you just have to note that the quantum state is defined up to a phase and here this quantity a by mod a it can be at the max e to the power some some phase factor would be there and and anyway this phase factor as you know it's not going to play any role here now let us discuss about the projection measurement and which is a special case of the generalized measurement scheme so we are now going to discuss about projection or basically not projection let me the terminology appropriate terminology would be projective measurement projective measurement which is a special case of the generalized measurement okay so say uh, to understand that let us we have an observable o and which can be of course observable o it's represented by an operator o cap in the quantum mechanics and this has say eigenvalues r say lambda i and the, the corresponding orthonormal eigenvectors are uh, represented by k lambda i like this right this is what the set of eigenvalues corresponding to the observable o and these are its eigenvectors so in that case i can now represent this operator uh, the so-called spectral decomposition i can do this we have done um, and it's actually it's very simple also you can have i is equal to 1 to say n o cap and this is your lambda i lambda i okay this is the completeness condition i'm using o lambda i uh, because the eigenvalue equation uh, is going to be satisfied so therefore i can write o operator o cap is equal to i sum over i here it will be lambda i this is an eigenvalue it is lambda i ket lambda i bra lambda i okay the operator anyway i can represent it in this form it's called known as the spectral decomposition of the operator o now let us make the measurement operator i am talking about projective measurement so let me define a operator m measurement operator in this form so lambda m lambda m and the corresponding uh, its uh, hermitian conjugate would be again as you can see it would be ket lambda m bra lambda m and it's very easy to see that sum over all this thing is nothing but if, if you just do it m mm dagger mm you will find that this is identity so therefore this particular property of measurement operator is anyway satisfied by this projective uh, operator also uh, now the probability for a given outcome it's a kind of repetition but we are uh, doing it in the context of projective measurement uh, probability maybe later on it will be more clear to you if i give more examples and i will do that 
so for probability for a given outcome for a given outcome m of a of a measurement let me write m as mt for measurement is then expectation value as i we have this result general result this is what we will have and this in the case of projective or uh, this thing what we are having is this is psi and this is lambda m right and this is again lambda m k psi and this guy is nothing but mod of mod square of this quantity lambda m psi mod square okay which is exactly the absolute square of the expansion coefficient of k psi for that eigenstate now what about the state after measurement so this is one result we have and state after measurement msmt that means measurement is going to be mm k psi divided by square root of p of m which is here psi mm dagger mm its psi right so if i open it up then you will get it would be lambda m lambda m k psi divided by square root of this result already we have so let us put it that would be modulus square of this quantity inside the bracket lambda m psi mod square so from here i get it as this is just a number right this is just a number so let me write lambda m psi it's a complex number divided by lambda m psi okay and this is lambda m get lambda m and this as you can see it is nothing but e to the power i theta because this is a complex number i can always write it as e to the power i theta into the modulus of this quantity this modulus get cancelled out and you will be left out with e to the power i theta lambda m okay here theta is an arbitrary phase and just like um, lambda k lambda m is the is an eigenstate similarly e to the power i theta k lambda m is also an eigenstate of the uh, observable o or the operator o cap okay so this generalized measurement scheme can easily be uh, actually generalized uh, to density operator as well so let me now extend this concept to the case of density operator formalism also extend it to density operator case uh, first let me do that for pure state that is very easy and simple actually it's very straightforward and as you know a pure state is represented by density operator rho is equal to this k psi bra psi and therefore the probability of an outcome p of m is going to be this is our result from generalized measurement scheme so i can now write it in the uh, using because this is nothing but the average right a kind of expectation value and we know from our density matrix formalism this i can write is as trace rho m m dagger mm -m. so this is the result i have in the in terms of density operator now now what about the state when the state changes uh, after a measurement with result m the density operator the density operator corresponding to okay first let me write the state after measurement as you we know that we are going to get the state to be say this one let me name it as say k phi after measurement i get the state uh, to be like this i have this psi m m dagger m m k psi the corresponding density operator that means at the output after the measurement i would get you will just for pure state is very simple this is what you will have and if i open it up what i am going to get is this m m k psi 
this brass i m m dagger divided by in fact you will get two terms and square root will go away and you will be left out with m m dagger m m gate psi very straightforward i think all of you can see this and this would be the output um, that means the after measurement the state would be the density operator would be m m rho m m dagger divided by trace of rho m m dagger m m okay so this is also an important result and this we have got in the context of a uh, pure state but the extension to the mixed state is also very straightforward and in the case of mixed states we are going to get actually the similar result so let me just quickly discuss that as well for mixed state um, our density operator for mixed state is given by this expression pi is the probability k psi i k uh, bra psi i so this is the density operator for the mixed state and this actually i can write as uh, sum over i's uh, this is probability pi and this i can write the density operator for the pure state gets uh, psi i right gets psi i i can write it the density operator rho i is referring to the density operator corresponding to the pure state gets psi i so this is the expression i can write now the join probability let me write because you see in the case of mixed state two uh, probabilities are involved here one is the so called classical probability and then the quantum case which we have discussed in great detail when we have discussed density operator formalism uh, now the join probability join probability for the system for the system to be in the pure state to be in the pure state k psi i and measuring and measuring the result measuring a result say m is it would be first this is the probability pi that is the probability to pick up the pure state k psi i and then getting the result m outcome m is p of m at say i right when you have picked up k psi i and then getting the outcome so this is basically the join probability and now you have to sum over all i's to get the total probability for getting uh, the outcome m as a result of measurement so total probability total probability total probability of getting the outcome m right because you have so many pure states are involved here every pure state is designated by one particular k psi i so you have to sum over all i's there and if you sum over all i's then here you have pi and this quantity for pure state case you have already know that would be trace of rho i m m dagger m m so this is what you will get and this is very straightforward and very simple because of trace operation i can write trace here and put the summation sign inside the trace operation trace operator then we have sum over i i have here pi rho i please note the symbol carefully okay this rho i'm writing kind of an in italicized way for uh, you know density operator thing and i have here m m dagger m m and this is nothing but as you can see this is trace of uh, rho rho m m dagger m m okay so as you see once again we get the familiar expression that we have obtained for uh, pure state also same expression similar expression similarly the uh, new state the new state after measurement uh, of the mixed state becomes this also 
uh, you are going to get exactly the similar one i don't uh, want to elaborate on it more but you can check it yourself this would be again you have to sum over all i's here you have this pi and then you have m m get psi i right and psi i m m dagger this we have done for pure state case and here you have trace of rho m m dagger m m and this is going to result in this particular expression m m rho m m dagger divided by trace of rho m m dagger m m so here only expression looks similar only point you have to keep in mind is that this density operator rho that i'm writing here refers to the mixed state and uh, if it is a pure state then you have to write the density operator pertaining to the pure state okay so as you can see the general measurement scheme covers all operations that can be performed on a quantum system many a times we are not interested in the post measurement state of the system but we are interested in the statistics or the relative probabilities of outcome that we can collect by making a measurement on an ensemble this we can generally do by the so-called povm or positive operator value measurement formalism let us discuss it measurement of the povm kind let us consider the set of operators say em is equal to m m dagger mm and of course all measurement operators whatever it is they have to satisfy this particular condition so this has to be identity and the probability of outcome the probability probability of outcome m right uh, on making a measurement on making a measurement let me write msmt to this is i mean by this i mean measurement on the state measurement on the state rho is p of m is equal to trace rho em this already we know right and obviously uh, for pure state in the case of pure state in the case of pure state this particular expression will simply boil down to expectation value of this operator em in the state gate psi okay let me illustrate this povm uh, by an example couple of example first let me begin with a trivial example say uh, consider a projective uh, measurement described by measurement operator pm these are uh, projectors such that uh, pm pm dash because you know the projection operators are orthogonal orthonormal delta m m dash p m this we already know and also sum over these operators is equal to one or identity and in this case all povm elements are same as measurement operators themselves because here e m is equal to p m dagger p m and which is nothing but pm itself right so here in this particular example all povm elements all povm elements are the same as measurement 
same as measurement operators themselves operators themselves maybe let me give you an another example this may not be uh, very appropriate to you so let us say another example consider this one let us say ketch psi is equal to a state is given it's a qubit system it is in a superposition of k0 plus k1 this qubit state what are the p of vm elements here and it's also a trivial and you know what are the p of vm elements here p of vm elements are two elements are there one is projector k0 bra0 and another one is e2 is k1 bra1 and it's very clear that sum over all these projectors which is basically e1 and e2 e1 plus e2 should be equal to identity entry right and there are two outcomes of the measurement so outcome outcome one two outcomes first outcome is say getting the state k psi this qubit state in the state k0 and the second outcome that say outcome number 2 is getting the state k psi in k1 okay and what about the corresponding probabilities probability of getting the outcome 1 is given by this expression and you can easily work it out it's very trivial so let me still work it out it is 1 by root 2 bra psi is bra 0 plus bra 1 here and e1 is this projector k0 bra 0 and k psi is 1 by root 2 k0 plus k1 and as you can very easily see that this is going to be equal to simply half right so similarly you can make it out that probability of getting the second outcome is also half and these results are already known to you because there is a 50 50 probability of getting the state either in k0 or k1 i just have illustrated you only by this example you you can see the importance of uh, povms when i talk about um, one important theorem or in quantum mechanics in particular related to measurement problem and this theorem is this that non-orthogonal quantum states non-orthogonal quantum states cannot be reliably distinguished non-orthogonal quantum states cannot be distinguished and this has very important repercussion in uh, quantum information processing and many experiments so let us actually prove it to prove that let me uh, argue it otherwise let us say we have k psi 1 and k psi 2 and these are two non-orthogonal states say k psi 1 and psi 2 are non-orthogonal non-orthogonal quantum states okay they are non-orthogonal quantum states and we'll assume rather than uh, assuming that because we have to prove that they cannot be distinguished so let us assume otherwise that assume k psi 1 and k psi 2 can be distinguished okay can be distinguished if this is not we are going to actually uh, going to get some kind of a contradiction now say there are two POVMs, two experiments are there to say there are two POVMs 
two measurements e1 and e2 such that such that they can be distinguished such that psi1 and psi2 can be distinguished can be distinguished reliably what does that mean this means that the probability of measuring kth psi 1 and getting the outcome 1 is 100 percent so you are going to get psi 1 e 1 psi 1 is equal to 1 and probability of measuring kth psi 2 and getting the second outcome outcome 2 is also 100 percent that means psi 2 e 2 psi 2 is equal to 1 or that also mean this is important results that also mean the probability of measuring psi 2 and getting the outcome is has to be uh, is zero so psi 2 e1 psi 2 is equal to zero and probability of measuring the state measuring sketch psi 1 and getting the outcome 2 is going to be zero psi 1 e2 psi 1 is equal to zero okay so this is what uh, we mean that if psi 1 and psi 2 can be distinguished reliably by two povms e1 and e2 now you see let us analyze it a bit further now we have this expression psi 1 e2 psi 1 is equal to 0 from here one can easily obtain square root of e2 psi 1 is equal to 0 this is uh, trivial to see this is what you are going to get now since k psi 1 psi 2 is not orthogonal is not orthogonal to psi 1 k psi 1 so therefore psi 2 can be decomposed uh, actually into two components one component parallel to psi 1 and another component orthogonal to psi 1 so one component orthogonal uh, parallel to psi 1 and other component is say, phi which is orthogonal to psi 1 so this is what you should get of course with the condition that mod alpha square plus mod beta square has to be equal to 1 so what is uh, what is the you know result of this uh, thing this means that then what you will have then you can see that square root of e2 psi 2 psi 2 i am now writing it as alpha psi 1 plus beta phi so let me just write it alpha square root of e2 psi 1 plus beta square root of e2 k phi okay now this is going to be equal to simply beta uh, beta square root of e2 it would be beta square root of e2 phi because this guy is anyway equal to zero by dint of this expression right so therefore we'll be left out with this one and this implies from here i can write psi 2 e2 uh, psi 2 right this would be equal to mod beta square and you will have phi e2 phi i think this is also trivial to see and of course this has to be less than or equal to mod beta square if i take sum over all eis all e's then i have this right ei phi okay now this has to be less than or equal to mod beta square why because because you know the probability of the outcome i is in the state safe ket phi because of the measurement ei is this and sum of all probabilities 
is has to be unity one okay so therefore it means that you should have sum over i phi e i phi is equal to one okay this is going to be equal to one so that's why it is less than mod beta square but this has to be less than one because mod alpha square plus mod beta square is equal to one so mod beta square has to be less than one okay but okay so what you get is this result you get but earlier what you have obtained this you got but earlier you got this expression that this you have taken it to be equal to one because you were able to distinguish psi one and psi two that is that is your assumption but what you have what resulted because of all this assumption you are getting in contradiction so this is this is a contradiction this is a contradiction so what does it mean this means that we cannot we cannot reliably reliably distinguish distinguish uh, orthogonal states orthogonal states actually non orthogonal states right we cannot reliably distinguish non orthogonal states k psi 1 and psi 2 now as a final example to illustrate povm formalism let me give you this example let us say alice gives bob gives bob a qubit prepared in one of the two states that may say psi 1 is equal to k0 and k psi 2 is equal to k0 plus k21 by root 2 okay now you can see that k psi 1 and k psi 2 are non-orthogonal so bob find it impossible to determine whether he is given k psi 1 or k psi 2 with perfect reliability however it is possible to for bob to perform a measurement which distinguishes the state some of the time but never makes an error of misidentification to understand that let us consider a povm uh, containing three elements consider a povm containing three elements containing three elements very cleverly chosen elements given as this e1 is equal to root 2 divided by 1 plus root 2 k1 bra 1 this is one measurement one povm element other one is e2 is equal to square root of 2 by 1 plus root 2 okay k0 minus k1 bra 0 minus bra 1 divided by 2 and e3 is equal to i minus e1 minus e2 and it's very trivial and straightforward to see that sum of all ems because this guy has to be satisfied whenever you are considering some measurement operators this has to be equal to one so they form a legitimate povm now say bob is given the state k psi 1 okay k psi 1 is equal to k uh, 0 he makes a bob makes a measurement he makes a measurement described by this measurement described by these three povm elements povm which are e1 e2 and e3 okay now the probability the probability probability 
very easy to see that probability that Bob will get the result E1 is 0. You can see that because uh, if you find out this expectation value psi 1 E1 psi 1 if you work it out because E1 already I, as I have defined here you see E1 if you take the operations k psi 1 is k 0 you can immediately see this is going to be 0. What does it mean? This implies that if the result of his measurement is E1 if the if the result of Bob's measurement if Bob's measurement is E1 then then Bob can safely say Bob can safely safely say that the state provided by state received by received by him or provided by Ellis to him must be must have been what must have been psi 2 not psi 1 right that's what it means and in fact you can see if you can work out psi 2 e1 psi 2 you will find that this is going to be non-zero so therefore bob has received the state psi 2 instead of psi 1 on the other hand on the other hand on the other hand if the measurement if the measurement outcome is e2 measurement outcome is e2 then then it must have been have been the state k psi 1 that bob has received right because because if you again mathematically see that if you calculate psi 2 e2 psi 2 you will find it to be 0 and you will find psi 1 e2 psi 1 is non-zero similar argument now sometime what may happen is this sometime bob may get may get e3 and then bob would not be able to then bob cannot distinguish or cannot actually conclude cannot conclude what state is given to him what state is given to him i hope by this example you have seen the power of povm measurements let me stop for today in this lecture we have discussed about quantum measurement process in the next lecture we are going to discuss about entanglement measures related to discrete variables so see you in the next lecture thank you so much Thank you.